So the next speaker is Mary Salvatore, chest X-ray for triaging suspected COVID-19 patients. Thank you very much for the opportunity to speak. I am a thoracic radiologist at Columbia, I'm interested in studying pulmonary fibrosis, which may become more important as patients live longer um, with uh, infection in their lungs like ARDS. I'd like to talk to you about the radiology of COVID-19. So first I need to give you some background information about what we see radiographically with patients with COVID-19 infection. Now if we look at the pathology of the lung, we see um, it's made up of secondary pulmonary lobules which have interlobular septa, the black lines, where, which is like the scaffolding of the lung. And traveling in those interlobular septa are veins and lymphatics. Here is the pulmonary artery, next to it would be its bronchus, and this fleshy area are the alveoli. On CT scan, we see the same findings. We see the interlobular septa with the veins and lymphatics, the scaffolding of the lung. This black area is the alveoli, and in the middle of each secondary pulmonary lobule is a pulmonary artery. If you look at this CT scan, we see a lot of round circles. So we see these round circles in the lung. So we know that the disease must be related to the alveoli. This is somebody who has hot tub lung. Um, they have MAI infection in their alveoli. And it gives you these low density round circles in, on the CT scan. I am a scientist at heart. I took three glasses of water, put a little water in the first glass, filled the second glass half filled with water, and the third glass all filled with water. And the same thing happens with the CT scan. When we have a little bit of fluid in the alveoli, we see what's called ground glass opacity. And when there's a lot of fluid in the alveoli, we see what we call consolidation. Now, um, this is from uh, an article from the pathology found in two patients with lung cancer in China who also had um, COVID-19 infection. What they found was um, proteinaceous material in the alveoli. And the way that we see that on CT scan is these ground glass opacities, so a little bit of fluid in the alveoli representing the fibrinous exudates. Typically, the ground glass opacity with COVID-19 is in the periphery of the lung, which is um, you know, interesting in and of itself why it would choose the periphery of the lung in a second patient. And it also has a basal or predominance. Um, so that helps us, although it's not specific because other diseases can look like this on CT scan. As time goes by, the consolidations become denser, so we see more consolidation in the periphery of the lung. That's one pattern that the patients get on CT scan. Other patients pathologically have areas of organizing pneumonia. And the way that that looks like on CT scan are these round tufts of ill-defined cotton ball like opacities. Here it is in one patient. And in a second patient, we see these round opacities that in a pandemic are very characteristic of COVID-19 but can be seen with other diseases as well. In particular, patients on immunotherapy um, when they're having uh, an adverse response in the lung can have this pattern. The interlobular septa become expanded in patients with COVID-19 infection due to fibroblast pro proliferation and alveolar epithelial type two cell hyperplasia. And the way that we see that radiographically is these lines that are superimposed on the ground glass opacity represent thickening of the scaffolding of the lung. The alveolar epithelial cell type two hyperplasia is interesting because it relates to surfactant production. And we see patients with um, excessive atelectasis on their chest CT scans and on their chest X-rays. And um, many patients are being prone positioned to decrease the amount of atelectasis in the lung parenchyma. Fibroblast foci are seen if patients have the um, infection for long enough so ultimately leading to dilatation of the bronchi. So if patients six months from now, we look at the patients who survived um, COVID-19 infection, we might see more fibrosis of the lung parenchyma. But we're not using CT scans on a regular basis at Columbia to look at patients with COVID-19 other than to look at things like pulmonary emboli um, um, and, and clotting problems or complications of COVID-19. Because the CAT scan takes a while to perform and these patients are very um, sick and unstable and hard to bring down to the CAT scan machine. And then cleaning the CAT scan machine takes time as well. So more commonly we're seeing um, chest X-ray utilization. Usually we have about half outpatient chest X-rays, half inpatient chest X-rays, but during this um, pandemic, we're seeing many more patients are having um, chest X-rays 
um, from the emergency room, maybe double the amount of ER chest x-rays. In the beginning of the pandemic, we saw a big rise in the amount of ER chest x-rays. And as the pandemic progressed, there was much more um, inpatient chest x-rays and fewer ER chest x-rays. So we thought to look at the role of chest x-rays in triaging patients since so many of the patients were having um, portable chest x-rays. Here we see um, a grading system for looking at a portable chest x-ray. So a patient, these were all emergency room patients that we looked at. They were between March 11th um, and March 26th. There were 1,256 chest x-rays that were done in the emergency room for, for patients with suspected COVID-19. They either had fever, cough, or shortness of breath. And we graded those chest x-rays. We looked at 410 of those, a random sample, 410 of those patients and we gave them a grade of um, normal or a grade of one if less than one third of the lung had some atelectasis and ground glass like opacities, a grade of two if between one third and two third of the lung had ground glass opacity and consolidation, and a grade of three if nearly all the lung had consolidation. So um, most of the patients, the majority of the patients had a normal chest X-ray when presenting to the emergency room, 55% of them were normal. These patients were on average younger. The patients with more consolidations were, were older in age. Unlike the rest of um, the reports with the male predominance, 50% um, who presented to the emergency room were male and 50% were female on average. We didn't test all the patients who came to our emergency room. We tested the sicker patients. So in patients that had um, no abnormality on their chest X-ray, 74% of them were not tested compared to those who had an abnormal chest x-ray, 70% of them were tested. It makes sense that as the um, amount of consolidation on the x-ray increased, the amount of oxygen saturation decreased. So you might say, why would we even do chest x-ray when we could use oxygen saturation? But the chest x-ray is actually more sensitive. People will have an oxygen saturation of 100 and have findings on their chest x-ray exam. We didn't see the strong association with hypertension and diabetes on these patients. Um, as there was seen um, in other studies. With regard to outcome of patients, if patients had a grade of zero, the majority of them were discharged from the emergency room. In contrast, those with a grade of three, none of them were discharged from the emergency room. A large percentage of them with a lot of infiltrates on initial examination were ultimately intubated and had long hospitalizations and increased likelihood of death. Regarding statistical analysis, factors associated with time to discharge from the hospital, the chest X grade was the most significant factor with regard to um, time to discharge from the hospital that we looked at. Oxygen saturation was also important. The likelihood to become intubated, chest X grade, X ray grade was statistically significant. Oxygen saturation was also important. Hypertension, diabetes, male gender, and age were, were less significant. But with regard to likelihood to pass away from the disease, age was the, the most um, significant risk factor. And this 20 of the 410 patients that we looked at passed away, and these are the Kaplan-Meier for them. So to review, patients with um, normal chest X-ray or very little consolidation have shorter lengths of stay on average. Patients with higher chest X grades are more likely to be intubated. Older patients were more likely to have more consolidation on their original chest X ray and had a higher risk of, of death, as is well known for this disease. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Mary. Um, Christine Garcia? Now, if there's a progression of the radiologic patterns, after looking at either the chest X-ray or any CT scans that are obtained later in the hospitalization course of the patients. Thank you for your question. Um, we did see um, progression of the X-ray findings and um, we also saw regression, which was encouraging. So um, not everybody has very many chest X-rays. So the typical um, ICU patient has at least a daily chest X-ray. But in this setting, um, people are not having daily chest X-rays. But when they do have follow-up chest X-rays, we, we, we see some patients have stability over time, uh, others progress, and then others uh, you know, resolve. So um, you know, a combination of, of findings. Okay, thank you. 